Hey everyone, so before I get started, I do want to let you know that you might hear uh, my washing machine start up any minute now. It's just filling up, doing some laundry, washing some bed sheets. <laughs> I seem to be laundry obsessed again, so anyways, it's getting done. This is going to be an update for week 35 and week 36, and I apologize because I know I've said that I wanted to do these weekly, but quite honestly... I just forget <laughs> to update and um, it has been a crazy past couple of weeks so it's not that there's nothing to update on but I just keep forgetting or I'm tired or put it off or whatever but anyways I'm doing it now. So the last time I talked to you I told you that I was going to go to the naturopath on the 28th which was a Thursday. And I did that, and the whole purpose of going there was to help prepare my body, um, is what she told me, help prepare it so when it comes time to do the acupuncture at the very end of pregnancy, um, it would be more likely to work. So tone the uterus, help um, efface the cervix, all that stuff. Well... <laughs> Um, her idea of doing that is me taking a bunch of herbs that I am absolutely not, not in any way, shape, or form comfortable with. And I'm not, like, if you have taken this, I'm not bashing you because I think, well, everyone's health is different. Everyone's body, everyone's body is different. Everyone's comfort level is different. And I think I'm more leery about it because I'm attempting VBAC and I have a scarred uterus and I just don't want anything to potentially harm my scar and cause it to rupture. So I'm very careful about what I'm willing to do and what I'm not willing to do. Um, it wasn't a total wash though. She did show me some acupressure points. Uh, I knew most of them but she showed me a couple of them couple of them that I didn't know about and how to properly um, do the acupressure and uh, then we talked about when I should come in for acupuncture and she left it up to me we could start it um, 37 weeks or we could wait till whenever uh, she recommended before I do the acupuncture to come in or to go to my OBs and get a cervical check to at least see where my body is at because it's not going to work if your body is not ready to go into labor. So you cannot ever be guaranteed just because you're at like a two centimeters or even six centimeters. I know a chick in my due date group who walked around with six centimeters dilated for like a week. That's insane. Um, but just because you're a certain number of centimeters at that point in time, and you do the acupuncture, it doesn't mean it's going to work, but the likelihood of it being more successful is better. Do you know what I mean? So the stuff that she wanted me to take was called Mother's Cordial, and I researched the crap out of that um, because I, after I asked her what was in it, I was just completely put off. So I wanted to see what other people thought about it too, and I think because it's well, this is from a naturopath. It's more natural, obviously, and a lot of midwives are choosing to do this instead of OBs. Um, but then again, I read other stories of midwives not suggesting it whatsoever. Um, it contains various different er herbs, but the number one thing that turned me off was it contained black cohosh. And uh, if you're not familiar with black cohosh, um, this, that's right up there on don't do that <laughs> with castor oil. Um, when you hear pregnant women talk about taking castor oil, you'll get like a hundred comments that follow saying, don't do that, that's really not good, it can dehydrate you, it can cause your baby to um, pass meconium, it's just really, really, really not good for pregnant women to take castor oil. So the black cohosh is right up there with the don't do that. Uh, and I just, I'm not at all comfortable. And she assured me that it's not going to send my body into labor unless it's ready. Um, the amount that I would be taking was very small. It's not straight black cohosh. It's mixed with other herbs. But I'm just, it's not, it's not something I feel comfortable with at all. 
the uh, regimen that she was going to have me do was take 20 drops three times a day um, in juice or water. And honestly, the smell of it is just completely disgusting. I can't even open the bottle without wanting to throw up. But as the closer you get to the end of your pregnancy, so if I was sitting here at 40 weeks, I'm supposed to take like 30 drops every four hours. And that's kind of along the same line as a castor oil induction. And it just, I'm very uncomfortable with it. So when she told me what was in the tincture and she told me the regimen, all the little hairs stood up on the back of my neck and just something told me, do not do this. So I'm not gonna. <laughs> uh, so the other thing, like I said, it wasn't a total wash. I got the acupuncture or acupressure points. So I've been working with that. Um, the whole idea though behind the tincture is to help increase the effectiveness of your Braxton Hicks, meaning you have more and they're stronger. Um, but I'm just not taking a chance with it. I'm pretty much going to let nature take its course in regards to that. I mean, I will do the acupuncture. I don't have a problem. I'll do the acupressure, but I'm not going to take any, any added herbs or medicines or anything like that. I have been asked about um, evening primrose oil. And I went, I kind of went back and forth on it. Um, it. Just where I have a scarred uterus, I'm really a lot more careful with what I'm willing to take and what I'm not willing to take. That has different, there's no like scientific study done that it's safe for women who have had a scarred uterus. The whole point behind that is to help soften your cervix and to help get it ready because usually towards the very end of pregnancy you insert pills vaginally. I think it's a thousand milligrams. I don't know. Some women take two vaginally and one orally. I, I don't know because I'm probably not going to do this. Um, but there's different things I've heard where it can weaken your scar. And then there's another thing that I heard where it can cause postpartum hemorrhage. And we all know that I have really crappy luck, so I'm really not interested in doing that either. Um, there's another thing about rad, red raspberry leaf tea, but right on the, the back of the box it says, do not use if you've had a prior C-section. Now, a lot of women in my VBAC group that I'm a part of are using it, but there's no studies to prove that it's safe with women who've had scarred uteruses. So I'm just, I'm just, I'm just erring on the side of caution. I just don't want to do anything to screw up anything. So, uh, that was week 35, um, towards the end of week 35. So I have my biophysicals every Monday and I am however many weeks and six days that day. My weeks turn over on Tuesdays. So week 35 and six days, I went into my biophysical and I had like a lot of problems walking that day. I just felt like the baby was really low and there was a bowling ball between my legs. So she hooked me up to the monitor and it showed that I was having minor contractions. Um, I think they were like every three minutes apart at the time. Um, the baby scored wonderfully on the um, NST and the ultrasound. But towards the end of the 20 minutes here on the NST, my contractions got closer together. I was moved into labor and delivery and was uh, contracting, the nurse said, between every one and three minutes. So for a while there, we thought that the baby was coming and um, I was very, very nervous because I'm only 35 weeks and six days, or I was at that time. I had a resident doctor there. Um, I'm really, like, I'm really absolutely, absolutely not impressed with the doctor that I saw who told me that I was 90% effaced. Um, they told me when I was in labor and delivery at week 35 and 6 days, his resident was there and the doctor that told me I was 90% effaced was standing right there. And his resident said, well, how, what's her progression? And the doctor said, one centimeter dilated and 100% effaced. So we were like, I guess this is happening. Um, he told me that he considered me to be in early labor because of how my contractions were going and uh, told me, gave me the option to go home. Like he was willing to keep me there. I'm glad I didn't because I probably would have had a C-section. Um, 
gave me the option to go home and said, wait for your contractions to get stronger, more painful, um, lasting longer. We might see you back in a few hours or a couple of days. So obviously I'm still pregnant. I went to my 36 week checkup and something was telling me like, I can't be right. Like I should have went into labor by now if I'm sitting at 100% of face. I should have gone into labor. So I got the doctor to check me. <sighs> this is a different doctor, by the way, because I see a group of OBs. Um, I'm not, I'm not really a faced. I'm, uh, I'm like maybe 30% a faced at most, and I'm not dilated. I'm, a, oh, I'm a fingertip dilated. But I'm wondering what the fuck? <laughs> like, how do you screw that up? How, how do you? misinterpret that like your hand is in my vagina there's only one possible thing that you could be checking that should be open and effaced or what have you so the the I don't even know the word like I, I just cannot believe that he screwed that up and it's not just a resident it was the doctor as well so I've requested not to see that doctor anymore in the pregnancy, and thankfully I'm not going to. But um, I had a nagging feeling because my husband mentioned to me, he's like, didn't he do that to you with Ellie? And my, I went back in my videos and watched, and yes, he did. He told me I was 2 centimeters and 90% of face at my 38-week appointment, and we had the induction date all set up. I went in for my induction. Um, and I was only one centimeter and 50% effaced. I don't know how this always happens. And they asked me, um, who told you that? Who told you that you were uh, 2 and 90? And I told them. And they're kind of like, yeah, this is what that doctor always says to everybody. So, I, I, just, I don't know why. I don't know what the point of telling somebody, um, those things are so my hopes kind of like for a natural labor kind of <laughs> went down a little bit I know cervical effacement absolutely means nothing at the time um but he just he set my hopes so high that I wouldn't need uh, an induction that things are gonna happen on their own blah 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 and I'm just like seriously <laughs> when I found out the truth so Anywho, um, I don't think that I'm going to be checked again until maybe 38 weeks because I think that um, my primary OB is going to do my um, membrane sweep that day if she can. So, I don't know. We'll see. But I did tell Matthew he has to come with me because I need someone to cover my hand and hold my mouth because the last time she gave me a membrane sweep when I was pregnant with Ellie... I'm pretty sure the entire third floor of the hospital heard me scream. It hurt so bad, but it worked. Uh, anyway, week 36. Um, it was pretty quiet, I think, from what I can remember. But I did have my maternity photos done at 36 weeks and 5 days. Uh, I also went to my biophysical week 36 and six, six days, and I finally got to see a very, very clear view of the baby's face. He's so sweet. He's got, like, duck lips going on. Uh, he's got Ellie's nose, um, and he's got fat rolls <laughs> and a head full of hair, they said, so I cannot wait to see him. Um, he was considered a little on the small size, but and now that uh, I see he has fat rolls... <laughs> I'm a little nervous to push him out, but um, I, I'm really, as more time passes, I'm getting really, really excited. I think that's all that happened in week 35 and 36. Uh, I am going to do a freezer meal video eventually. <laughs> oh my gosh, I have so many things that I want to do and that I want to get done and then it never gets done. So anyway, this is going on 15 minutes, so I'm going to wrap this up. And I probably will try my very hardest to stick to weekly videos now that I'm 37 weeks, officially early term. He can now come any day. I don't expect him to come anytime soon, but 
it's crazy to me knowing that he really could come any day now. That's crazy. <laughs> Alright, I will talk to you guys later. Bye!